Welcome to Cycling Demystified and a special series of podcasts on the 10 essential pillars of bike fitting. We had such a good response from a recent webinar we did on this subject and so many questions that we thought we would dive deeper into the 10 pillars and bring you a podcast episode for each of them. We've dedicated an entire episode to each of the essential pillars so that you can take the exact same proven methods we use in our bike fit sessions and apply them to your own bike fit. Hopefully this will be particularly useful for those riders who can't make it over to our studio in London. We'll be releasing two episodes each week, one on Monday and one on Thursday. Follow along in sequence and you'll be able to build your bike fit up in the same order as we do in our studio sessions. As always, if you have any questions off the back of this series, get in touch. We want to hear from you and we'll help you find that amazing bike fit you've been looking for. So grab a seat, cup of tea and tune in so that we can share the knowledge we've accrued over thousands and thousands of bike fits. A commonly misunderstood stood part of bike fitting is where and how to position your saddle relative to your feet. Matt, Way and Ev explore the consequences of having your saddle set too far forward or too far back. Once you know what to look for, you can find the right starting point. Finalizing your saddle setback will come in the next episode where we delve deeper into how saddle setback affects your weight distribution. <laughs> So this is part six in the 10 part series of bike fit essentials. The and 10 pillars of bike fit. Yeah. And these uh, pillars are offered up in order of how we progress through them in our bike fit uh, fits mm -hmm. that we uh, kind of do every day in our bike fit studio. So we're now on to pillar number six, which is saddle setback or saddle position fore and aft. So how far forward you should sit your saddle, how far back you should sit your saddle. So we are gonna explore kind of how you go about it, what the implications are for setting your saddle in a certain position, a bit like cleat fore and aft, mm -hmm. I guess we were talking about earlier. Um, and what choices you have within um, the range that you have of moving saddle back and forth and why you should choose a certain position over another, um, what kind of problems maybe you might encounter as you kind of, uh, explore this, and some of the stuff you might not be aware of. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff that, um, or symptoms of uh, poor bike fit that uh, people may be experiencing, which are definitely down to saddle position, but you're not aware of it and um, there's quite a few myths around like, kind of where you should be sitting your saddle position for or off. So uh, there's quite a few different methods that you can go through in uh, discovering how to position your saddle correctly. But yeah, we're just here to explore that and give you as much value as we can so that you can start exploring yourself and uh, having a think about your own position and uh, seeing how, uh, what you can do about your position, where you should be positioning your saddle. Um, Whew, that was quite a lot. That was a big intro. You build it up. I'm excited. Oh, there you go. I hope everyone's excited. Where do we start? Well, let's start by talking At the beginning. About... <laughs> yeah, let's start at the beginning. Because that's a good place to start. The tip of the saddle. Oh. Mm. Uh, well, I think, what is it and why do we care? Yeah. That's a good place why to do start. We, why do we yeah. care? And what is it? Where's your saddle position, Dev? Uh, mine is almost dead center in the middle of the rails. I'm very proud of that. Oh, very proud. Almost. A little bit forward. Yeah. Does it but have to be in the middle? I just looks nice. Yeah. But <laughs> that's not the. I've got a zero setback. Q Q I well. buzzer. Q I <laughs> buzzer. It looks nice. I put it that's, in the rails because it looks nice. I in did the middle everything of the rails to that bike nice. because it, the silhouette looks nice while it's sitting in the cafe, and then I learnt to ride it. Hmm. Well, I think a lot of people do. It's a bit like cleat position. Yeah. No one tells you where to put your saddle. Well, yeah, where do you start? Surely, yeah, you're going to stick it dead center. Start in the middle. And then then you've got range. You, you can go forward or you can go backwards. So yeah. but then you've got to sit on it and ride the thing and find out how it feels. Yeah. Where are you supposed to sit? On a saddle. On a saddle. It's a triangle. Where, where do you sit? Not on that. Where are you supposed <laughs> to sit? Pull that one down. 3D printed though, you know. I went straight for the expensive one. Like a magpie. Like a magpie. And so go. where are you supposed to sit on your saddle? Well, that's actually well, a really good place to start. Um, 
because we've already talked about um, getting your seat height in the right place, mm -hmm. getting your cockpit in the right place. So assuming you've gone through the rest of our kind of process already and you've got those in the right place, now you can start positioning the saddle so that it is both comfortable and also effective. Mm. So yeah, where are you supposed to sit on the saddle? And uh, I generally advise that you should be sitting uh, on as much saddle as you can be so that you feel supported on both sides of your pelvis and without the saddle getting in the way of your pedal stroke. So usually if you sit a little bit too far back, then your thighs will kind of hit the wings of the saddle as you're pushing down on the pedal stroke. Uh, or you feel like you're kind of just sitting off the back of the saddle mm. far too much, you're not sitting on enough saddle. And the opposite, if you're sitting too far forward on the saddle, then you're just sitting on the nose, you're not sitting on very much saddle at all. It's not supporting you through your pelvis, through the bone, so you're just sitting on soft tissue. Usually pretty uncomfortable. So most people won't want to sit on the nose of the saddle for very long. Um, so yeah, you, you can simply kind of, as a starting point, just move that saddle back and forth and just see where you can sit on as much of that saddle as you can. And that's usually somewhere on the rear third of the saddle mm. where the saddle it kind of widens out and will kind of sit underneath your pelvic bones. Um, and yeah, use that as a start point um, of you know, where, you know, where you should position your saddle, ride it and see what happens. That sound, uh, does that sound fair, Matt? Sounds pretty fair to me. Yeah. Um, so you should sit right on your sit bones, right? <laughs> Just staring at Matt, waiting for him to throttle me. The QI buzzer sounds in my head. <laughs> well, not sit bones, but just on your on your pelvic and well, pelvis. On the pelvis. Your pelvic structure. structure. Your weight ideally wants to be supported through bone, not rather tissue. than soft tissue. Right. And if the saddle is positioned correctly then it should be both comfortable and you don't really notice it. So it doesn't mm. get in the way, it doesn't rub, it doesn't chafe, yeah. all the rest mm. of it. Um, right. So part of where you want to position your saddle setback is influenced by your cockpit reach. But assuming you know your cockpit reach is kind of correct at the moment, mm. you want to be able to kind of reach the controls nice and easily whilst you're sitting on the on the saddle without kind of moving off the saddle if you slide forward onto the nose of the saddle whilst trying to reach for the like the controls then your saddle's probably sat a little bit too far back um if you find yourself pushing yourself onto the back of the saddle then you may find that your your position uh, your saddle position is a bit too far forward mm. so those are things like that i think it's worth caveating at this point as well that saddle fore aft is not a good way to compensate for poor cockpit position. This was my question. I read your mind. <laughs> I saw a look. <laughs> and this um, is a sign of usually poor fit mm. or lazy bike fitting yeah. where you're using one element of the bike yeah. to perhaps compensate. You're saying, okay, my another. saddle's so far back that I'm having to stretch for my bars, so I'll just stick a shorter stem on, or my bars are too far away, so I'll just shut yeah, my saddle forward. Usually that. Usually, that usually oh, my bars are too far yeah. away, yeah. I'm going to slam my saddle all the way yeah. forward to compensate. Mm. But still, there there is use in kind of doing that. Absolutely, but yeah. it's just being aware yeah. of any potential ramifications because reach is i mean we're going to go through reach in another podcast but right yeah <laughs> but yeah. that's a like uh, well, pandora's box because yeah. there are lots of reasons to yeah, yeah. have a longer or shorter reach so right? how how we normally go about it uh, there is a process um that we follow um is that let's say your handlebars are at a certain position at the moment mm. and you want to try and figure out you know what what distance do you need to have between your handlebars and your saddle so let's just say your handlebars are fixed at the moment so mm. it's easier to kind of move your saddle forward and back and let's just say you have to move your saddle forward so that you can get in a position where you are supported by the saddle 
and you're not you don't feel like you're overreaching to the handlebars that's a good starting point you need to establish that distance yeah once we've established that distance then you need to kind of take note of what else is happening um and this is where we need to decide whether or not your saddle is now too far forward or too far back mm. or kind of within range and you do that by well you you have a first of all you just kind of do some riding and see what the symptoms are. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you feeling any new discomfort? Right. Are you feeling any pain? Mm -hmm. uh, has anything got better? Has anything got worse in your riding, having made that adjustment? And should we talk about, yeah. So what, what, um, so what would we look out for if our saddle was a bit too far forward? What symptoms would we kind of see so feel looking at things like weight on your hands tension in your shoulders your neck uh knee pain front, pain in the front yeah of the pain in the front of the knee down into like down your the, kind below, of like below your kneecap down tib ant the, the uh -huh. front of your shin grippy toes yeah numb feet because basically you're falling off the front of your exactly saddle. so you're trying your your body's trying to use your feet to push you back and and, hands, then, and yeah. your hands and then you're putting loads of pressure yeah. where you don't want to be yeah yeah you're basically trying to stop yourself from falling, from falling forward. forward yeah so i think we talked about this in uh, previous podcasts but we go back to our squat analogy so there's so many different ways in which analyzing our squat can kind of help us with determining where our bike position should be um, so if we go back to, I think it was uh, in cleat positioning, we're talking about what happens when um, we put too much weight forward in our squat. So we come mm. onto our tiptoes, we feel unbalanced. And essentially, if you uh, have your saddle a bit too far forward, it basically shunts your body forward. So it's a bit like you in a, being in a squat position and then leaning far forward as far as possible as if someone's like pushing you forward whilst you're in a squat position. And you do get to a point where you get pushed so far forward that you can't maintain your balance. You literally will fall forward. And quite often this happens on the bike. You get that sensation of falling forward. And as Matt, you pointed out, you end up having uh, too much weight, excessive weight on your hands. Mm -hmm. You just feel like a lot of weight on your hands, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of weight on shoulders, elbows, um, and as you were saying, yeah, absolutely. Like if you're falling forward, then your body's trying to stop you yeah. from uh, falling forward and it will use everything it can to stop itself from falling forward. So oh, the musculature in your legs is both trying to produce power to yeah. you know, uh, push, you, push power through the pedals and power, propel you forward, but it's also having to work at the same time to hold your body back to maintain balance. So that doesn't sound efficient at all. No, no you're, you're asking your legs to do twice as much work, yeah. both physically and posturally, which yeah. is like, it's yeah, it's super taxing. So yeah, that's what happens when your saddle gets pitched too far forward. And essentially we can sum it up by saying that your body weight is too far forward, it's not mm. balanced. So what we do want to find is a balanced position. Um, and so we have to position our saddle so that it allows our body to be positioned far back enough behind the bottom bracket that we don't feel too much weight through our hands. Mm. Um, we can still pedal efficiently um, and do all the other things that we need to do on the bike, like steer the bike, yeah. reach down for our bottles, move around the bike, uh, we can balance. Ride with no hands while going right. Wee! Yeah, 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 that's really important. So, you know, we've, we've had so I do so that on my commute. <laughs> <laughs> Waving hands in... Uh, Waving my hands at gesticulating at drivers yeah. with both hands. But, but, but we've had so many riders who've come in who have struggled to finish rides because they couldn't mm -hmm. take their hands off the handlebars to drink from their water bottles. Wow. Because they literally had so much weight on. If they took their hands away, then yeah. they would. Wow. You know, they just couldn't steer the bike. Or yeah. something. And it's something people don't really think about that much. Also, Pete, yeah, and and things that even you know, if you're commuting on your bike, taking your hand off to signal. Yeah. 
or just to you know to ask someone behind you, "Oh, slow down! I'm about to you know, hit the brakes or something like that." Yeah. It's kind of a, a it's a requirement, isn't yeah. it? Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, steering requires like you, your hands are on the bars not to hold your body weight up. They're there mm. to steer the bike. Yeah. The controls are there. And so your hands need to be light. They need to be able to move. You should be able to just change direction through flicking your wrist, yeah. uh, moving the wrist around. But if you've got a lot of weight on your wrists and your your arms are there to support your body, then you can't steer the bike. Similar well. to what you said about yeah. your legs having to do a lot of work to keep your you on the saddle yeah. if your arms are doing a lot of work yeah. to weight you yeah, know, hold, hold you up, yeah. then they're doing double the yeah the double work, work trying to you know yeah, control yeah. the bike. Absolutely. So definitely those those things we should be mm. uh, looking out for. So if you find a nice balance position, then you should find all of that stuff really easy. Um, we do a few tests, don't we? You do. You do. Uh, what kind of tests. Some are relatively easy. Some are a bit more aggro. <laughs> Depends, but there's a, there's lots of things that you can do. So, if you're kind of riding on the turbo at home, you can. I mean, we'll go into this in a sort of you know subsequent podcast about weight distribution. But you know, can you rotate forward from your pelvis whilst pedaling and take your hands away from the handlebars? Mm. You know. If it's a race between your face and your hands to see what meets the stem first, then maybe your saddle's a little bit too far forward. Or maybe you need to do some work on your body mm. to strengthen the musculature. Well, get my teeth in. The muscle structure um, around your core, your glutes, your hips. Mm. And there might not be enough weight going through your feet to kind of maintain that position. You might be putting too much weight through your hands. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like one of the tests we do. Another easier one is can you just float your hands between yeah. the hoods and the drops? Yeah. If it's a really kind of like fluid and easy transition, then your saddle setback is likely in a good place yeah. and you're balanced on the bike. Yeah. If it's a bit shaky and you don't really, you have to go really quick yeah. between each yeah. each one. Or one hand at then, a time. Yeah, one hand at a time, yeah. then maybe you're in, a, in not too much of a, yeah. a good place. Mm. So there's other stuff that you can try to kind of see if you can figure this out. Mm. Um, but yeah, we'll get more into weight distribution and things like that yeah. on a subsequent oh, podcast, I think. But it does, it, yeah, saddle setback plays massively into that yeah. as well. But yeah, going back to what we were saying about the squat, essentially, you're, like the way I think about saddle setback is for most people, depending on kind of like what kind of riding you're doing, but essentially you want to be able to push straight down through the pedals yeah. with a balance of posterior chain and anterior chain and support your weight. What's that? The front of your I'm leg. Sure and, the front of ask. your leg and the back of your leg. Right. Glutes and quads and hamstrings. Just using, so. you know. Science, scientific so, language. So I've got a little bit of knowledge, people. I want to <laughs> put it out there. No, it's fine. You don't um, normally get to use big words I don't words get to normally use so, big you know. words at home because, yeah. Because you get colder. <laughs> Well, Names. <laughs> no, I just live with someone who's like way more intelligent than I am. Um, but yeah, so you essentially want to be able to push straight down through the pedals yeah. with a balance of muscle recruitment. So right. you're recruiting as many fibers as yeah. possible to take as you know, take as much of the strain of yeah. pedaling the yeah. bicycle. To as, make it as, as, as easy efficient as and easy as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So essentially your saddle position in space relative to your feet, that's its job. Yeah. To support your pelvis whilst applying so, force through so the pedal can, so that your pistons balanced, can yeah in a balanced and neutral yeah. manner right. and that's basically it and um pushing straight down on the pedals is the most effective way of creating force on the pedals but you can you can choose though again to have a slightly less efficient position if you want why would you want to do that well i think it's, it's a more efficient for a certain job right okay. so if you're specializing in say, well, the big buzz at the minute is, you know, what Tade Pogaccia tends to do with his position and how it changes depending on where he's riding. If you know you're riding up mountains for hours on end, mm -hmm. then maybe you want a slightly further forward saddle position and a slightly more nose down saddle angle, which will put you more neutral 
when the ground, when the is, ground is elevated yeah. yeah exactly so you're in a more neutral position relative yeah. to your feet so on the flat he's not going to be super comfortable unless yeah. he's putting out an insane amount of power which he is which he probably is yeah probably compared uh, to the then, rest of us and then as soon it's the opposite of a downhill bike a downhill mountain yeah, bike which is super you know, you're going to have a silly position if you're on the flat you're going to look ridiculous but as soon as you start going downhill yeah. your front wheel is so far yeah. out in front of so you so there's always choices kind of trying to flatten out the, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's just what are the consequences of making these choices yeah and that's the it's kind a compromise. of thing. Yeah. Everything is a compromise. If you're, yeah, blatting round here, racing the crit yeah. on a Saturday morning, exactly. you're probably not going to be want to be super chilled and you know, nice and neutral. You yeah. probably want to want the bike to feel good when you go when in you're faster in and pushing harder on the pedals. Powering. Yeah, so, you know, hence, a slightly, yeah. <laughs> hence my bike position. A slightly further forward position may yeah. give you that, yeah. depending on your you know functionality yeah. and your ability to sustain that yeah. for the duration of your event. Because there may be... For those for those stronger riders, is there maybe a little bit of a negative in that? If you've got a very strong core, you might end up in a position where it's not optimal, but you've managed to make a go of it because you're always you, you're used to that position. Oh yeah, I'm asking yeah, for me because yeah, yeah. I used to race and <clears throat> don't anymore, but I'm still using that position, and it's like. Maybe I don't need to. Oh, we we see it all the time. Like we just watch the crit races around here. Yeah. Like the the people that win don't always have the best position. Mm. You know, there's so much more to winning races than. But they're only going. Races. They're only doing forty five minutes worth of lap. That's nothing. Yeah. You know, um, that's not riding a bike. That's that's going to the shops. So, but but this is this is where you. <laughs> This is where you have to experiment, yeah. Because there's always a cost, you know, as Matt bangs on about, is the yeah. cost benefit analysis. Yeah. So the trend now is for aerodynamics, yeah. aero. Mm. You got to get low. You got to get narrow. You got to get far forward. Like the reason why we get far forward and we have triathlon bikes that kind of pitch us forward is that so that we can fold our bodies into a lower, smaller, more aerodynamic position. Mm. This actually compromises your ability to generate power and force because you overload certain muscle groups. Like the more f the further forward you come, then the more anterior chain, the more kind of f front muscle mm. you use, like your big quad muscles, they get overloaded because you're not balanced. Um, and so may maybe that's fine. Like you can maybe you can train yourself to have larger quad muscles so that you can maintain that aerodynamic position mm. uh, and that's the trade-off but also like, like people get uh, a little bit miffed uh, especially when tri bike positions we position them in a new position and they're nice and aero and so on and then they go on the, the turbo and do their swift sessions and, and they find the numbers yeah and their power goes down yeah. you're like yeah because you're in a in a less efficient position mm. but the trade-off is that actually you go faster because you're more aerodynamic mm. But you don't know where that boundary lies until you start playing around with it and almost going a bit too far. And, and also, like, the, 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 the power thing is a little bit of a... Oh, duh. Yeah, duh. You know, it, That's like one you for another day. You, yeah. That's one for another day. <laughs> you want to be, you want to be putting out less Mate. power and going at the same speed. Yeah. Like, yeah that's absolutely. efficiency. That's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. So we talked about going mean. forward right. before I get into the power rant. <laughs> Talks about going too far forward. What about going too what far about back? going too far back? What yeah. happens if you do that? So if you think about your squat again, if you sit too far back in your saddle, you don't end up pushing straight down on the pedals. Um, if you sit So like you're riding a recumbent. Yeah, you, you end up pushing the bike away mm -hmm. or that kind of point of uh, peak force becomes much further kind of forward. Uh, rather than the six o'clock position, yeah. pedal stroke becomes more like you know, four o'clock or something like that uh, on an extreme case. So you almost feel like you're pushing the bike away or you're reaching for the pedal stroke. You're reaching out mm. before pulling the pedal stroke back towards you. That's an interesting term, pulling, pulling the pedal stroke mm. back. Yeah, I mean, you, you almost feel like you have to in yeah. order to kind of create enough. Force. You have to get that momentum going. Mm. Like it's, a, like you're kind of like turning a bigger lever. You're, you're, it's almost like you're lengthening your cranks artificially, isn't it? Because you're kind of stretching yeah. away from. Yeah, you. the distance you if have to cover having... from where you sat, where yeah. you're sat relative yeah. to where your feet it's go, further is further. Yeah. Yeah. So 
yeah, it makes total sense. So there's going to be, yeah, um, you're going to there's going to be a problem stretching forward, and then when you come back, you're you're, you're pulling losing, the pedal. You're, you're not doing anything. Yeah. There's nothing. Nothing's happening for a large yeah. portion of that yeah. pedal stroke. Really. So you're, you're minimizing not... the amount of the yeah. pedaling circle yeah. where you can apply force efficiently, yeah. which is between twelve and six. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we, you know, uh, we live, it's easier when you have a bit more gravity yeah. helping you <laughs> through yeah. that kind of pedal stroke. Yeah. So. That's why you're most most effective when you're pushing down. Yeah. And you're um, probably going to have problems. You're probably going to be stretching to your bars, likely. Yeah. Likely. Yeah. So yeah. all those things. If you feel a combination of both stretching, stretching through your pedal stroke and stretching through your bars, and maybe some lower yeah. back pain because yeah. your back's caught in the middle, mm. then yeah, that, and you feel like you're sitting off the back of the saddle. Then yeah, mm. that's probably a, a sign or signs that your saddle position is it, it, This this sounds like all the elements of bike being too big not yeah. necessarily yeah. but yeah usually yeah but yeah. Yeah. yeah it could be saddle too high yeah because oh, yeah. as yeah. we know the higher this yeah. because the angle of the seat yeah. tube that affects mm -hmm. the fore after the saddle as well but yeah i think all, all of those things but it's um you know if you feel discomfort then uh, it's time to change some things around mm -hmm. and again like nothing acts in isolation you have to kind of look at it um as a whole but hopefully as you kind of follow these steps, then you can get each step should take you closer and closer to uh, uh, a better position. Mm. Um, and you just have to go through the process and uh, kind of experiment slowly one bit by bit. Um, but the next uh, uh, part of the discussion is all about weight distribution, weight distribution which is uh, connected to um, saddle setback. So um, yeah, if you want to know the next part of uh, how to get your saddle in the right place and tune in for that. Also think it's worth mentioning on the topic of setback as well, if people are looking to experiment with this, mm. you move the saddle forward and backward on the rails, it also affects the distance that you have to cover to the pedal stroke, to the bottom of the pedal yeah. stroke. Yeah, we did not talk about that. So, so when you are adjusting this stuff, there, there's a, there's a magic ratio. Is well, there a magic ratio? I'd, really... say, I'd say a frame of guidance. Okay. There's no, there's no magic. So if, like for every, it's not every millimeter or every two mil that you go for forward or backwards. Well, let's let's talk about it somewhere. in the next one because ah, I think okay. in this section here, we just want to make sure that people Fine. get the saddle forward and back underneath them in the right place. I'm getting ahead of myself. I think it will be more relevant in the next. Uh, uh, episode where we talk about weight distribution because okay. this is where you have to keep more variables the same. So I'll contain my excitement. There you go. All right. <laughs> See you in the next one, folks. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell all your friends about me. At Cycling Demystified on Instagram, tell everyone. And leave us a review on your podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, whatever. That would help us out a lot. Suffering from numb hands, tingling toes, and any other persistent discomforts when you ride? These are all signs that your bike fit could be improved. If you're bike fit curious, get in touch with Way or Matt by emailing info at foundation.fit or finding them on Instagram at fdn underscore bike fit. Finally, for all your bike servicing needs, custom dream bike or hand-built wheels, go to www.frequencycycleworks.com or find me on Instagram at frequencycycleworks. Until next time. Thank you.